This battery here is the first LiPo that I ever owned. I don't use it anymore, but for some reason I just kept it around. But the most disappointing thing about it is that when I was first starting out, I didn't really know what I was doing and I probably got three flights out of this battery before it became completely unflyable. And it was totally my fault, and it was definitely preventable. I just didn't know any better. Fast forward to now, the LiPos that I'm currently using have been going strong for eight months, and they're still in great condition. And honestly, all it really takes is a few simple habits that have done consistently can increase the lifespan of your lipos from a couple days to probably well over a year. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So when you buy a lipo and take the brand new battery out of the box, if you were to grab your charger, plug it in and check the battery's voltage, it would probably read somewhere around 3.8 volts per cell, or about half full. Now, this might seem weird, because if you were to buy a household battery, let's say for your TV remote, you'd expect it to come fully charged, because that's exactly what you're paying for, right? A brand new battery. However, this isn't a mistake, and don't worry, you didn't receive a faulty or old battery, and once you charge it back up again, it should work without a problem. In fact, selling you the battery at this particular voltage was very intentional by the manufacturer and is what is called the battery's storage voltage. Now, keep in mind that this is the voltage per cell. So for a 4S battery like this one, the storage voltage would be around 15.2 volts while for a 6S battery, the storage voltage would be around 22.8 volts. Now, the reason your battery came shipped to you this way is because a rechargeable LiPo functions a little bit differently than a single-use household battery. And keeping these at a full charge is actually not great for the battery's lifespan. Although the processes are very different, I like to compare it to the way that we intake food for our own body's fuel. Both overfeeding and underfeeding your LiPo is not good for the battery's health. Like we're always told, it's best to eat in moderation, especially when your battery isn't doing much work and is inactive for an extended period of time. It's important that it only holds a moderate voltage in order to stay healthy and maintain optimal performance. You don't want to overcharge your battery if you're not going to spend that energy in the near future. Sure, if you're about to put your battery through some strenuous work, you want to fully charge it to make sure it can complete the task at its full potential. And as long as it burns through that energy in the near future, giving it a bit of extra fuel is perfectly fine. Most people would say that a LiPo battery can hold a charge for about 48 hours. If you leave it sitting around for longer than that, the battery will start to slowly degrade and lose its ability to hold a charge. Now, the same goes for discharging your batteries and leaving them empty. If the battery remains discharged, the voltage could drop below a critical level, causing permanent damage to the battery as well. This is why, if you don't plan on using your batteries for more than 48 hours, it's best to bring them back up or back down to that safe storage voltage. At that voltage, you could probably keep them for a couple of years without using them, and they'll probably still be healthy once you do. But what if you are actively using them? How long should you fly them for? You obviously don't want to drain the battery completely and have the quad fall out of the sky, but what is the best time to land? Well, the short answer is when your battery is around 80% empty, or at about 3.5 volts per cell. Let me explain why. On a graph, if you were to map out a LiPo battery's voltage as it is being discharged, it would look something like this. As you can see here, when the battery is about 80% empty, its voltage begins to plummet drastically. If a cell ever drops below 3.0 volts, it should be considered damaged and probably thrown out. There are ways to recover it, but the risk of a LiPo fire in the future would significantly rise and unless you're willing to accept the possibility of some serious consequences, 
it would probably be better to retire the battery. This area where the voltage significantly begins to drop is also around 3.5 volts, and many hobbyists would consider this to be fully discharged, as discharging any lower begins to risk damage to the battery. This is why habit number two is always discharge less than 80%. You want to land your drone before you reach that voltage of 3.5 volts. Now again, this is per cell, so on my 4S battery, that critical number would be around 14 volts. Now this can be tough, because sometimes your voltage might temporarily drop pretty low, and then rise back up again, and that's okay. You can see that in this clip. I start with a voltage at around 14.4 volts. However, when I punch up at full throttle, you'll see that it dropped very temporarily to 12.7. And now as I fall back down to a slower hover, it goes back up to around 14.3. However, not until I unplug the battery from the drone and check its voltage, can I see that its actual voltage is much higher at around 15. Therefore, to know when to land, you never want to solely rely on the number you see in your goggles because you're never going to get an accurate voltage reading while your drone is still plugged in. So how do you know? Well, unfortunately, we can only guess. But the more familiar you become with your drone, the more accurately you'll be able to estimate. When in doubt, it's better to land earlier and discharge too little than too much. For me, I like to play it pretty safe and I'll usually land my drone when, at a steady hover above the ground, I get a voltage reading of around 13.8. If I do this, land the drone, unplug the battery and check its voltage again, I'll usually get a much more accurate reading of around 14.7. This is very close to the battery storage voltage, or half full. Now, yes, this is very, very early, and I could definitely get longer flight times out of it. But, personally, I do see a few benefits to doing this. First of all, once your battery is less than half full, because of its lower voltage levels, its performance actually starts to suffer. I learned this from Mr. Steele, who's a professional freestyle pilot, and he says that he flies his batteries to about 50% as well. By doing this, even though he'll have slightly shorter flight times, he always flies with the best performance possible and doesn't have to worry about having a less responsive drone. Personally, I also like the fact that I never have to worry that I might be over discharging my LiPos. It's also easier on the batteries and it'll probably increase their lifespan even further. Okay, I'll also admit that sometimes I can be pretty lazy. And after I finish flying, I'll often leave my batteries discharged for a couple days. However, they're usually already so close to their storage voltage that I don't really have to worry about further degradation. How close you decide to discharge your batteries to that 80% mark is totally up to you. However, the one recommendation that I do have is that you try to discharge all of your batteries to the same point. By doing this, it'll make charging significantly easier for you. However, I'll talk more about that in the next video. So, to wrap it up, how do you increase the lifespan of your LiPos? First, land early, and then when you don't plan on using them for a while, make sure to return them to a safe storage voltage. It's as easy as that. If you feel like you learned something from this video, please give it a like, consider subscribing right here, or check out my playlist of how to FPV videos right over here. Thanks guys, I appreciate everyone for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.